Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. This is that big antenna I was telling you about. Let's see what comes in the box and get this thing installed on the truck. Never mind, I better run. Inside big boxes come big things. That's it in the box. A set of U-bolts to hold down the antenna mount. Nice piece of metal, very lightweight, so it's probably aluminum. But you can find a couple of different ways to adapt this to whatever it is that you would like to install your antenna on. You could screw directly into this, into the wall to hold it in place for you. Or you can use the included U-bolts to go over a roll bar, some rebars in the front, over a ladder on the back of your RV, over a regular ladder for some temporary installs, up on a tower or something along those lines. This here is a pretty serious bag. And then the perfect way to ship an antenna is inside of a bag, inside of a bag. This is interesting. Let me see if I can get you a better view of this. This antenna is big. This looks like an end connector on the end of the antenna mast itself. Yep, so that looks like an end connector as well. And this is the spring-loaded, don't break when you hit a bridge thing because you've installed your antenna too high on your RV or whatever. And then on the bottom here is a nice little nylock nut. And that works in conjunction with the mount that they provided. Washer, then lock washer, then nylock nut. And then tighten that down until it is exactly as tight as you need it for your application. The way that I normally do that is that lock nut should be flat. And then over here is a regular PL259 to go into the back of your radio. And the coax that they include with it is RG58. I already have this Radiotity UV771 antenna installed. And so what I'm gonna do is remove that. And then that leaves me with an SO239 adapter sticking up out of the truck. And I've installed a PL259 to end connector adapter. And so this will just screw right into place. <laughs> That's pretty cool looking. Ready to get down to some serious GMRS business. So my windshield's a little bit dirty, but this is the view out of the front of the truck and the antenna is over there. And it is pretty far outside of my field of vision. From where I'm sitting, it is probably, this is the A pillar in the car. It looks a lot more like this on the side. That's kind of the best I can do for camera angles in this situation, but really what the point I'm trying to make is that it is not really in my field of vision and it's black, so it kind of disappears anyway. So I'm not worried about it. The A pillar in the truck is much larger than the footprint of the antenna. I can easily see around the antenna and tell what's behind it. That A pillar, I could probably lose a small car much more in the way than that little antenna. I'm sure one of the other things you guys are gonna to wanna to know is how this thing works out on a Nano VNA. So, of course, I got you. I brought a Nano VNA. So let's get this puppy open. And inside is the Nano VNA High H4. And then there's also room down here for a bunch of useful tools that go along with the Nano VNA. So this is a really good storage case for it. I've already done the calibration, so I don't need most of what's in there. Let me get this thing turned on. And then we will do recall. And you can see I've got a calibration down here, 462 and a half to 468 megahertz, which is pretty much all of the GMRS band. And now we are ready to plug in the antenna. And this is my coax, not the coax that this antenna came with. And then and there we go with the coax that I have already installed on the truck. And you can see we're above three to one all the way across the GMRS band. So this is up in the repeater section. And then down here, we are down in the FRS section at 3.2 to one. Looking at the way this curve goes, my dip is somewhere down here, which means this antenna is too long for the velocity factor of the coax that I have. I'm gonna try their coax and see what happens. This is the end of their coax. This is pretty neat. You'll see this on a lot of mobile install coax, but this end comes off, which makes it really easy to feed through your firewall and into your car and everything. And then there's your radio connector and you just put that back on when you're done, just like that. I was able to remove my connector here and install the antenna directly onto my mount. And then, I don't know if you can see it in there or not. There might not be enough light in there, but the coax actually runs up through the center of this 
to that end connector that's in there. So this is not part of the antenna. And I was kind of thinking that it might, and that would have made it even longer. Let's see how it looks now. Okay, so with my coax, we were three to one. Let's see where this thing lines up. Oh, it's, it's better already. Look at that. So at the bottom part of the band, we are at two to one. And at the top of the band, we're at 1.9. Pretty nice little sweep. I'd like to see it a little bit lower. Okay, I know you guys didn't come here to see antenna charts, SWR charts on an NOVNA. You came here to see if it'll make contacts. Let's do that. This is a very, very local repeater. This is gonna be almost cheating. All right, so we got the repeater tail on that one. Let me get another one programmed in. And then I'm in Benson, Arizona, and this one here is the same operator, but it's a different PL tone. This one is 30 miles away. And I can't ring that one up. And that's where line of sight has its advantages. I am currently below solid rock on my way to that path. And on top of being below solid rock, I also have a metal clad RV on my right and a metal clad RV on my left. And that's all the repeaters that are near me. I've got the one that is like right down the street. It must be because I can hit it on a dummy load inside the RV. And then I've got the one that's in Sierra Vista, which is through solid rock. Let's try this in more of its natural habitat. I'm gonna take this off my truck and put it on a side-by-side. -side. Let's see. We got a different install here and we're looking at the SWR chart on the Nano VNA. And this one is 1.79. You can kind of see it up in the corner there. And it's got a nice little curve to it, but it's telling me that the dip is farther off screen to the right. Hmm. I could go up just right up the uh, the back road, like going on 90 there. That okay. gets you up a little bit higher too. Okay. So it won't restart? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it bumped. Oh, I thought I hit something there. There we go. All right, let's try it from up on a hill. Testing, 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 testing. Nope, no tail back from the repeater. Of it. Nice. All this trash. This is crazy. Can you imagine someone sleeping in that damn train going across this? Oh, that might be fun. couch. This is wild. Old typewriter, record player. Oh, a rotary phone, nice. I remember them. I used them. Yep. That's the one my old phone number. Can't remember anybody's nowadays, but. Don't need to. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, I guess this used to be a fifth wheel. Oh, crock pot. Easy living. I bet that frame's still in good shape, too.
We're on top of that house now. And then over there is that broken fifth wheel we just took a look at. We're gonna have to do some more testing when we get somewhere where there's more GMRS repeaters. But these things are like tools in your toolbox. You have to have a good antenna and a good radio and people to talk to. And right now I have two out of three things. There will be links for this antenna in the description down below where you can get some more information about it and possibly find some more and interesting ways to install it besides the ways that I have done it. In the meantime, there's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.